Well, as per usual, Jack Trainer has a very solid book of drives at Common Angle on Saturday night. I caught up with Jack to find out which ones may be the better of his outstanding book. Well, Jack, before we delve into the drives on Saturday night, Stravinsky in the previous short price favourite, disappointing. Yeah, he was really disappointing. His um, work indicated that he was on song and I really thought he put in a good effort today. Um, so I might just look to give him a spell and work on him later on in the winter. A little bit slushy close to the pegs. Any excuse there? No, no excuses there. The, the track is a little bit off today, but um, he's still had his chance. If we went down a head or a neck, I'd cop that, but um, no, we're not making any excuses. Well, let's have a look at the drives on Saturday night. In the first, you've got my ultimate Andy, newcomer from David Kennedy's establishment. Second, behind Carla Jane at Bathurst. Yeah, he went really good at Bathurst. He probably just needed the run and bed, and I just watched the drive a bit too. I come to the outside and give the winner uh, the sprint lane, so that probably cost me. So he'll only be better again from that run, and I expect him to go a really good race. You also have Spirit of Anzac, drawn out a little bit wide. Two runs back from a spell have been below his best. Yeah, that's right. He's just um, got, got me scratching my head a little bit at the moment. I've just changed a couple of things over with him and the way I work him over the last couple of weeks. And this week we'll drive him with a set and see if he hit, how he hits the line. So if he can go off his work, I expect him to improve and I'll be really disappointed if he doesn't go a better race on his previous form. Over to race two and Chevron Art. Now, you must have upset someone because a lot of your drives on Saturday night are going to be carrying the number 11 saddlecloth. Yeah, I did see that when I was scrolling through the fields on Saturday, uh, on Monday. I was thinking, geez, they haven't made it easy for me. But um, obviously that was drawn on dollars. So with his chariot to fire third, um, his money's right up. But he was one that I took a blood test on him after um, Penrith, his last race, where I was disappointed. And it did show that he had a, quite a bad virus. So I've um, treated him with antibiotics between now and then. And um, on his work, he seems to be right back to his best although he's going to have to be from 10 this week. He's probably one to follow uh, in the coming weeks. Um, obviously, it's going to be very hard this week. Interesting. You come to the stable in race 3, 4, 8. Once again, number 11, Saddlecloth. Yeah, I'm really excited to get this horse. He's got a big motor, and um, Matty just asked me if I'd take him for a couple of months so he doesn't have to travel with him. And uh, A bit like Chevron Art, he's probably in, in a bit of trouble out from out 10 this week, but when the conditions of the race change and he's drawn in close, he's been one to follow. His work's been really good since I've had him, and I think he'll do a really good job. Eighth behind Ideal Dan and the young cup are better than that. Yeah, that's right. He's um, well, People know that he's got that really brilliant turn of foot and he can follow speed. So I just note that there was a 2300 metre free for all the following week, being next week, and I think something like that would be right up his alley. Now over to race four, two interesting runners, BK Spy and Town Echo, seven and eight respectively. Your drive, Jack? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to drive um, BK Spy. I'm really happy with the way she hit the line last week, sort of shades of her being back to her best. And um, Town Echo, obviously, she's unbeaten since she's been in Australia and just keeps, seems to be getting better and better. And uh, albeit, I don't think she's the best leader, she seems to wait for them a bit. So hopefully this week we can drive her with a set and uh, use her speed. But yeah, it's very hard to separate those two mares. They're both in great form and both really good assets to my stable. Yeah, there's a lot of depth in this particular event. And as you mentioned, Town Echo has been leading because she's just been too good, but lethal off a sit. Yeah, she is. Um, two starts ago, I was behind the leader and um, she'd come out early and loomed up, went straight past the leader and quick dash over a couple of hundred metres and then got found lost out in front on her own again. So Cam's always said that he felt that she would be better with a sit. So hopefully this is the week we can drive her that way. King Scar goes around in race five. Once again, number 11 saddlecloth for Anton Galino. Yeah, um, Anton told me uh, that he's got a few tricks this horse, but he really likes him. He thinks he's a really nice horse and... Uh, obviously, Anton wouldn't bring him up here for no reason if he didn't think he was competitive. So, I'm actually going to have a drive on him on Wednesday just to get a feel for him and track work. And uh, yeah, hopefully, it'd be nice to win a trotting derby. Jack, you've been driving in outstanding form for a long period now, but geez, you're going to have to pull out a big one here to get Revy J home in the Bull Eye Trotters Cup. Yeah, that's right. Actually, her run um, wasn't as bad as it probably looked the other day. She actually couldn't just get that last corner in the La Cucaracha. And then when she straightened up, she actually let down and found the line back to its shades of her old south. So it's obviously, like you said, it's going to be hard and she's the sort of horse that has to be driven for luck, but I think she's on the right way to go and back to her better form. You're going to see the outside fence once again with Kalina KJ in the ninth of it on the card with a wide saddle cloth. Two runs back for Jason have been very nice. Yeah, that's right. He's a really nice horse, and um, depending on how my night goes, but if it's been a bad one, I might just cut the ribbons and just send him on forward. So he's got brilliant gate speed. Obviously, Don Boston's drawn inside us, but um, he showed up last start that he's good with a sit as well. And I think he's a horse that's going to do a really good job for Grimo. And yeah, I, I don't know. It's all depend on how my night's been early, how I drive that one. What an old marvel, Don Boston. He's, he was sent to the uh, paddock. He's been retired, but he's been 
kicking his brands off apparently according to Brad Abbott and he's had to bring him back into work. Yeah, that's right. He just won't die, Don. He's, um, yeah, he's, sometimes he's a work your worst nightmare in a race and um, then obviously sometimes he's a blessing. At least, you know, one thing he keeps the race honest and um, he's pretty true to his word, Brad, and he, he doesn't sort of back off. So he's done really well for that horse and uh, hopefully he can continue for him. Jack, an interesting book. The better of them? I think BK is wise back to her best. I'm really happy with uh, her work and her last start. And she showed in the ladyship mile that she can go with the best mares. So obviously um, both the McCarthy horses will be hard to hold out, but I'm sure she'll be hitting the line and give a real good sight. And stylish Memphis after her run in the slot, how she pulled up and what's her plans now? Yeah, so reports are she's um, enjoying her time in the paddock. She's going to have a couple of months spell now and hopefully if she comes back um, at another, another prep, she'll be back in about December to try and go one more ladyship. So, yeah, fingers crossed everything's all good there. So just get through these winter months and brighter things ahead when the summer rolls around. Yeah, it's a long wait. I'm missing her already. It's hard to replace those horses, so it um, just makes you really appreciate what a good mare she was. Jack, as always, thanks for your help. No worries. Thank you very much.